Because of the ubiquity of proportions, which means proportions are everywhere, there's a lot of English language variation on proportions, which means that there are some English tricks that can kind of sneak up on you in a problem that you want to watch out for. So these are proportion hypotheses words to watch out for. So pay close attention. So if you see these words in a problem, they're going to kind of signal some things for you. All right, now the first one is prevalence. So a prevalence rate is uh, the standard rate that's assumed to be true in an area. So we say, for example, you know, the prevalence of diabetes in America is at 15%, say, right? So you're, when we do that, we're kind of saying, hey, we think that the null hypothesis is whatever that prevalence rate is. You assume it to be true unless you can prove it otherwise. So a prevalence rate, if they say the prevalence rate is this, that's the null hypothesis. They're giving you the null hypothesis. All right, now, um, there's prevalence comes, but you know it's not as common as the other two, which I will tell you, we run into a lot. One is majority or most. So we say, you know, most people think this. A majority of patients think this. Majority means more than 50% which means that your alternative and your null are going to be set. Once you see a majority, once you see most people think this, then you know that your null hypothesis has to be that P equals 0.5, and your alternative hypothesis has to be that P is greater than, more than 0.5, period. That word, either majority or most being in your problem, can literally give you both the null and alternative hypotheses. By the same token, the word minority can give you your null and alternative because a minority is less than 50%. So if you see the word minority in a problem, it means that your H0 is P equals 0.5 as well, but your alternative is that P is less than 0.5. So let me give you an example. We have a researcher for the Gallup organization believes that a minority of adult Americans have good jobs, i.e. have full-time employment. Once I see that, that's all I need. I know that the null is that P equals 0.5, and the alternative is P is less than 0.5, period. That word gives me all of that. By the same token, right, Gallup, in 2019, Gallup released a poll that said a majority of Americans prefer a life sentence to capital punishment, aka the death penalty. Majority means once I see that word, they don't have to give me any more in that problem. I know it's a survey, so I know it's 0.5, and I know that the alternative is greater than 0.5. That word gives me all of those pieces. Sneaky, huh? Because it's just one word, and you're, you know, as a student, you're hunting around in the problem for extra pr numbers and percentages, and but there aren't any more because this one word is giving it all to you. This one word is giving you all of that. All right, now let's do another one. This one actually uses the prevalence rate. So on July 19th, 2020, the U.S. had a COVID-19 prevalence rate of 1.15%. This is before the pandemic hit, or no, this is after. July 2020, that would have been after. Um, a researcher for the Jackson County Health Department thinks this is not the rate in Jackson County. They take a random sample of 430 people 430 people in the county and find that nine of them have COVID-19. Test the researchers claim at the 0 0.05 level of significance showing all steps, works, and graphs. All right. So now what I will notice is that you don't have to do the whole requirements thing. You only do the requirements thing if it's asked for. So this random independent normal thing we don't have to do. It's stating so right here, but even if I didn't say so, um, we just assume that we don't, right? Do not do, um, I guess I should say do not. So do not check um, random, independent, normal, unless asked for. You only do it when it's asked for in a problem and it was not asked for. So we are not gonna do it. Cool, that's less work for us, we like that. All right, so step one, 
we need an all, a null hypothesis and an alternative hypothesis. Well, it's talking about a prevalence rate. A prevalence rate will be a p, right? It'll be a proportion. And we're going to assume that it's 1.15%, which is point. Now remember, you move the decimal two spots to the left. So it's 0, 0,115. And a researcher thinks this is not the rate in Jackson County. So they're not giving us a direction. They're just saying, hey, it's not that. So not would be a not equal to 0, 0.0115. Step one is done. All right, step two. Alpha is, uh, it has to be given somewhere, there it is. Alpha is our level of significance, so 0 0.05. Step three, now this is the annoying step, the step all the students hate, because <laughs> you have to write out this formula, right? So Z0 is P hat minus P0 over big square root P0 times Q0 over N. Again. All right, well, P0 is easy because P0 is 0 0.0115. 0 0115 right here. I know it's 0 0115 right here. I'm going to have to figure out Q0. I know that N, let's see, N is 430. It's right here. There's N. All right, so that's nice. So I know N. All right, so let's do a couple things. One, let's figure out Q0. So Q0 is 1 minus P0. So Q0 is 1 minus P0. So that's 1 minus 0 0.0115, which that's a little tricky math, maybe. So let's go um, check it in Desmos. Oops, that's a calculator. <laughs> All right, so 1 minus 0 0.0115 is 0.9885. Okay, so 0.9885, we're going to write that right there. There we go. All right, now what about p hat? Well, I didn't give p hat on this one. I gave, so p hat is x over n. So remember, that's another note. p hat is x over n, but x is right here. It was 9 COVID positive out of 430. 9 successes out of 430. So that's successes, that's observations. Remember, success is not a good or bad thing. We learned that in chapter 6. It just is what it is. So I'm just going to write that. 9 over 430. <laughs> I'll make StatCrunch figure it out. All right, and at this point, I'm entirely done with all the by hand stuff. Step three is the worst part because you got to find your Q0, you got to figure out your P hat, you got to do all this work. But at this point, use stat crunch. Right? So we're going to use stat, proportion stat, one sample with summary. So let me grab StatCrunch. And hey, this is going to be an easier problem for us because it gave us x to begin with. So we don't have to go find it. We know our number of successes. We had nine people that were positive for COVID. We had 430 total. We know that our null hypothesis is 0 0.0115. And then we wanted the not equal to. We want the alternative. Don't forget to click your little p-value plot. you got to scroll down here and click that little box because that makes step four done. And then click compute. Now, it's all there. I mean, if you scroll to the right, you can kind of see it. But if you just hit the right arrow, that has everything you need because you can see the answer for step three is 1.8341. That's the z stat. So I can go put that in right now. It's 1.8341. But then I also have my picture for step four already done. Let's go back and look at that picture again. So I, I've got some tails, right? I've got two tails sh shaded. 
and they're pretty good sized. And I know that the p-value is 0.006, or excuse me, 0 0.0666. Okay, so I'm going to kind of shade these tails. Okay, there's two things when you shade. So you shade them so it looks like it does on the graph, on the picture for StatCrunch. This value is negative 1.8341. This is positive 1.8341. This is negative Z0, this is positive Z0. Now, if you're thinking, where are you getting that from? Well, this was Z0, and it tells you to do that right here. It's basically saying the absolute value symbols just mean put the negative one on the left, put the positive one on the right. So since it was positive 1.83, that's right here. Negative 1.83 is right here. The p-value is both tails put together. So you put the p-value at the top and you put a double-sided arrow, and you say that that p-value is 0 0.0666. It's not, you don't label each tail. Both tails together make the p-value and 0 0.0666. All right, so now we have to make our decision. So remember that we want to reject HO, but you can only reject HO if your p-value is low lower than alpha. Well, my p-value is not that low. My p-value is 0 0.0666 and my alpha was 0 0.05. So I do not reject HO because my p-value, which is 0 0.0666, is greater than my alpha. I'm going to put not less than my alpha, which is 0 0.05. Now, you can write it as a not less than. I want it to be less than, and it's not. That's what the slash through it is. Or you could put a greater than sign. That would work as well. So notice StatCrunch does this part, which is really tricky. That's a hard calculation to type correctly into Desmos. And it does this whole graph for me. I just have to copy it down and make sure I label it correctly. But the labeling is shown how to do in my diagram here on my reference page. So I just follow what it tells me to do. P-value, Z0, negative Z0, and I've got my double-sided arrows and everything. You just put your values in and you're set to go. Now all I have left is my conclusion. When I do not reject, then I write there is not sufficient evidence evidence to support the claim that, all right, now we've got to go back and figure out what this was. The Jackson County Health Department thinks it's not the rate. What's not the rate? The COVID-19 rate is not the same. So we thought the COVID-19 rate in Jackson County was not 1.15. So the COVID, oh, I'm spelling COVID wrong. It should be capitalized. Sorry about that. COVID-19 rate in Jackson County was not 1.15%. It's okay that it's got two knots in it. That's all right, right? This knot is coming because we did not reject H knots. You go, there's not sufficient evidence to support the claim. And the claim is always the alternative hypothesis, which is that it was not 1.15%, that it was not the prevalence rate and we didn't have enough evidence to prove that. I'm not saying that it's not true, but we just didn't have the evidence to prove it. That's what we're saying. So there's not sufficient evidence to support that we are different than 1.15%. All right, I'm gonna quickly show this in the TI-84, but if you're not in with the TI-84, you can skip ahead to the next video. All right, TI-84 folks. So let's see here. Let me clear this out. So we're gonna go to stat, going to go to the left to tests or to the right twice either way and we want to go to number five which is one prop z test we want to tell it 0 0.0115 we would tell it 9 4 30 and then do a not equal to and then calculate and there we have it you can see 1.8341 that's your Z right there, and your p-value is 0 0.0666, just like we had with StatCrunch.
if you want to draw it, um, you can do that too. It's just when you go down to calculate, go to draw, and there. That one actually is drawing it okay. You still have to know how to label everything, but there you have it.